the things he's brought you through. What a mighty God.
even when we don't feel him working, he's working. He's making a way when we can't see it. He's working. Don't ever doubt it. He's making a way to that breakthrough moment. And then you'll see he was making a way all along. While I was worrying about it, fretting about it, trying to figure it out, he was making a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are here to recognize our first time guest. If this is your very first time worshiping with us, would you please stand? We would like to recognize you. First time guest. Amen. Well, it's all family in the house. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. So right now, we're just going to ask that you go and greet your neighbor however you want to greet your neighbor. Amen. Some people fist bumping right now, so... feeling the love in the house right now. Amen. Feel that love. Our responsive reading will come from the book of Psalm 91. We'll be reading the first through the 11th of Psalm 91. When you have found it, if you would, and if you can, please stand as is our custom for the reading of God's word. Are we all ready? He, uh, well, let me back up. Don't want to make any assumptions here. I'll read the first verse. You'll read each alternate verse, and the last we'll read together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my, my God, God, in him, him will I trust. trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover with his feathers, and under, under his, his wings, wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by day. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. I'm going to ask that you read that one more time, because sometimes we have to be reminded what God said about us. Please read 11. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Hallelujah. For, For he, he shall, shall give, give his angels charge over thee, thee to, to keep thee in, in all thy ways. ways. Hallelujah. Good morning, world. 
fertilized. I know my mouth big enough, so, but I'm here to do the announcements. We're going to start with Eye on Health. Um, we have a, a spring into victory. This is going to be spearheaded by Sister Juntel, and I don't see her. This is going to be spearheaded by Juntel Gibson, and it starts March 13th through April 11th. And um, you be fasting from different things. You have a choice to choose from, and you replace them with daily workout and daily prayer. Everything that I'm reading today is going to be available on flyers that is at the front desk. And when we go out, everybody got to pass the front desk anyway, so grab your flyer. This is Spring to Victory. Starts March 13th through April 11th, and that's um, under the Eye on Health Ministry. Jelly Bean Jubilee, which is April 9th, 2020, from 4 to 7 at Simpson Park Community Center. That's at 1725 uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. Children 12 and younger are welcome. Families and friends are invited to this fun spring event to celebrate with Peter Rabbit. <laughs> Bounce houses, face painting, games, and prizes, and then the egg hunt starts at 6.30. Again, this flyer is also available at the front desk. Pick it up on your way out. Okay, join us for the historical, historical <laughs> and cultural tour of Egypt. I don't see them either. Okay. This is October the 5th through the 17th. The cost, don't let it scare you. The cost is $3,250 per person with a $100 deposit and um, 16 additional due by April the 30th. This is a trip from Egypt, uh, and I wish he was here. It's, it's so much involved in this trip, you guys, that 3000 is well worth it well worth it me and my husband even researched it three thousand is well worth it so um again this flyer is, is um and it has all the information contact it's contact people contact numbers email and everything that's available on the flyers so you can pick it up at the front desk okay do the right thing lakeland police department scholarship program the eligi eligibility requirements <laughs> Are any student enrolled in the following Polk County High Schools and is in the 12th grade? Kathleen High School, Lakeland High School, Lake Gibson High School, George Jenkins High School, McKeel Academy, Tenor Rock, but you have to be Lakeland residents at, of Tenor Rock. And we have a Summerlin and IB also have to be Lakeland residents of these schools. Okay. And again, all of this, all of this is available at the front desk. And it's too late for that. Okay, <laughs> uh, the um, the uh, sold to your polls that ended on the eighth. <laughs> so, at at 10 a.m. from from 10 a.m. to six today, if you haven't done it, today is the last day for that. Okay. And these are your announcements. Y'all have a great one.
y'all real good one, one word I took away from that a lot but confidence the Bible says I'm confident Paul said this that he that begun a good work in you <laughs> I'm gonna tell you God didn't just start it he doesn't start things and not finish them he said he's gonna complete that uh, you might well get ready you might say you might look in the mirror and, and look at yourself and look at yourself a certain way tell somebody God's not finished with me yet. In fact, he just started. And he that started a good work, he's going to finish that good work until he come and get you. So you might well brace yourself. Praise God. But that's not why I'm up here. Praise God. You cannot give a preacher a microphone. That's the worst thing the church could ever do. Don't ever do that. It, it, it's really, it's offering time. Praise be to God. And you know what? I don't know. I know, you know, we come out of the world and, and God calls us into his marvelous light. I don't know what people know and what they don't know, really. Uh, Jesus said it this way. You can't put new wine in an old skin. It doesn't work that way. That new wine will bust that old skin. And so we, I don't know what you know about tithing and offering, but just, just give me a second here. And let me explain it to you. How's that? In Leviticus chapter 27 if you haven't gone and looked at it you spend some time verse 30 through 33 every Christian all know that Leviticus chapter 27 verses number 30 to 33 it'll do you good but let me give you the cliff notes because that's all I got time for right now the Bible says that the tithe is holy unto the Lord now I, you know I don't know your your interpretation of that I don't know how you view holiness some people think that means clean that's not what that means Holy to the Lord means it's taken and it's set aside and now it belongs to God. That means it belongs to him. Anything that's holy has been set aside and it's his now. And he said the tithe is holy. In fact, he said, let me tell you something. If you want to give me the tithe and all of a sudden you like to have that horse back or that donkey back or that sheep back, he said, you can do that, but I want one-fifth back on top of that. You might not have ever heard that before. And for you mathematicians, one-fifth means 20%. So you ask me about that offline, I explained it to you. It just means the tithe is holy, don't mess with it. <laughs> I'll explain it to you if, if you got time, some time to tell you what that means. But you know what? God doesn't care about our money. Paul says it's really about the spirit that you give it in. So right now, as we pray, you pray. Because God wants a cheerful giver. So let's cheer up. I, I like happy giving. I don't like sad tithing. Let's all praise God and let's give happily unto the Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we wouldn't have it without you. Lord, if you didn't give it to us, we wouldn't even have a tithe to give to you or neither an offering to give to you. So thank you for your faithfulness and you've been so good to us. And Lord, you continue to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And we are grateful for that, Father God. And help us to be sowers of seed. And Lord, that it'll come back to us. Lord, you said cast the bread on the water and Lord, we'll be able to go pick it up. And, Lord, we just trust you for those things. Lord, bless this tithe. Bless these offerings. Lord, that it will be used to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
or not, uh, and, uh, but we're going to get you out here early so you can go home and make up uh, for that one hour that you missed. How many of you missed that one hour? You really, you don't even know if you missed it. Uh, that one hour, man, that one hour. And uh, I was so glad that uh, somebody reminded me because I didn't even know. Until somebody said, don't forget now to set your clock, you know, up and uh, for the time change. And I'm like, man, I'm so glad they did that. Uh, I would have been just coming in. <laughs> really? That one hour, man. But I like this. I like this time. I like the long days. And uh, when you get older, you'll understand. You know, when you get a little, when you when you get up there in, in age, as soon as it turns dark, you're ready to go to sleep. So I've been in bed like 5, 30, 6 o'clock. I start winding down. Yeah, I look around, man. It's 6 o'clock, man. It's 6 o'clock news. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in pajamas. I'm asleep. So I like this time. I can get more done. I can do more work in the day. Uh, when it's daylight than I can at, at night, you know, so I thank God so much for it, you know, it don't get dark until around what time now? About, about 7, 30, 8 o'clock? Yeah, I love that, I love that time there, so I, I, I can do more uh, when it's like that. Don't forget prayer school, prayer school that's coming up on March the 21st. 9 o'clock a.m. here at the ministry, sign up. It's going to be a, a wonderful class as we teach on, on prayer. Pastor Stephanie and, and myself will be uh, doing some sessions uh, uh, as it relates to prayer. She's going to cover the topic, Praying in the Spirit. And I'm going to do Praying with Understanding. And uh, so we want you to come out on that, on that uh, morning, and we're going to have a, a wonderful time uh, teaching on prayer. Because uh, I'm, I'm finding out uh, many Christians don't know how to pray. And there is an effectual prayer. James talks about that. I believe the Apostle James talks about the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Uh, I think King James says, availeth much. But in Amplified, I think it said, it makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Think about that. It makes tremendous what? Power available, dynamic, and it's working. So we want to learn how to pray effectual and uh, also praying in the spirit, which is uh, kind of lost now in the body of Christ. We don't, we don't want to uh, uh, tap into that area uh, like we used to uh, in the charismatic movement, the Pentecostal movement. Uh, we talk a lot about praying uh, in the spirit or, or another term is praying in other tongues. We kind of backed off of that because it was it was uh, 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 some people didn't understand it and and some people didn't think it was for uh, this time today. So pastors kind of backed off of it. But 
uh, when we pray uh, uh, in the spirit, uh, Jude calls it, uh, in the book of Jude, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So, uh, so we're talking about prayer uh, in those sessions, and it's going to be a, a wonderful time on that morning. We want everybody to come out and participate in, in that prayer in that prayer session. Also, I want to thank Pastor Kevin for uh, Wednesday night. I heard Wednesday night was power pack. Come on, give God some praise uh, for that as we continue to uh, uh, go along uh, in, our, in our study books uh, on the fundamentals of the faith, uh, basic things that we should know as believers. And uh, uh, that's very, very powerful. Now, before we go uh, any further, don't, don't, let me, let me, let me, man, how can I start this off? Don't allow the world's system to use fear to motivate you. Okay? Fear, fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. And I know they come on the news and I don't know the depths of this stuff they're talking about. You know, the corona and all of that stuff, and folk just so afraid. And I'm not saying we don't be careful of things like that, but I don't trust the government. I just think they come up with all kinds. There's stuff they used to talk about, we don't hear about it anymore. You know, once they use that fear and extract money out of the stock market and get you to go out there and buy stuff like we did when they say the hurricane was coming, and it, it, stuff, it stimulates the economy. You know, and stuff of that nature. You know, I was I was working at the basketball tournament uh, uh, the past couple of weeks, man, and, and folk was running around, didn't want to touch nobody. You know, people coming in with masks on. That's why I, I, I heard Brother Royce uh, say the fist bump. That's what they're doing now. We ain't shaking hands. I don't want to touch your hands. So we, we do the fist bump or the elbow touch or the bump. You know what I mean? I mean, nobody want, nobody want to touch. I mean, you know, people, I mean, this thing has, this thing has caused people, man, they don't, they panic and they don't know. And, uh, you know, so they had to come on uh, uh, TV with the uh, vice president and the uh, head of the CDC. I think a CD, is that CDC? Yes. Uh, to, to, to let you know, don't, don't be fearful because it's not the United States economy that they're trying to wreck. Okay. A lot of stuff has to do with this trade deal with China. That's why they went straight to China, messed the economy up. They can't ship anything out. Workers are going because they need them to sign this agreement to lower prices on stuff. So a lot of that stuff is motivated. Fear motivates people. And, and uh, God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but a power, love, and a what? Sound mind. See, fear, fear has torment torments you when you you're fearful that's why God gave us faith faith balanced the whole thing out faith puts us on solid ground as it relates to things that are happening in this world and what you have to understand is that Satan is the God of this world system the earth is the Lord's but Satan is the God of this world's system okay and we are products of the kingdom of God system of operation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's a system of operation. His way of doing things and being right. Okay? Then Satan is the God of this world system and we have to understand that uh, going forward because uh, things are not going to get much better if we understand the word of God. The word of God tells us that in the last days, perilous times or difficult times are going to come. Uh, and that's why uh, when, we are, when we are doing what we do, when we are assembling together, what we're doing, we're building, we're building people. We're building lives we, to, to advance the kingdom of God. That's what you are here. You are here as new creations in the earth realm, and God calls us church. Say, I am, I am the, church the church 
And see, once you get the revelation knowledge of who Jesus is, like Peter did, uh, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my what? Church. Church. Say, that's me. He said, and the gates of hell cannot prevail. So, in other words, Satan has no legal authority over us. Hell gates can't prevail against us. And what we have to understand about hell's gates are gates. Gates are stationary. Gates don't move except on a post. So what he's saying is the gates of hell can't stop us from doing what God has called us to do. This warfare, this is spiritual warfare. This is not church as usual. And we've got to understand why we are in the earth realm. Why are we here? Why did God leave us here? Well, he, he left us here to advance the kingdom of God. God's way of doing things and being right. So uh, the enemy uses that man manipulation. It's, it's, it's a warfare. It's a, it's a mental warfare. That's why Paul calls it that in 2 Corinthians 10 when he said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Stronghold casting down what? Imaginations. Where are imaginations? In your mind. It's in your mind. You're either going to win the battle or you're going to lose the battle in the arena of your mind. That's where the fight is taking place. So if we just keep listening to CNN and, 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 and MSNBC and all these different networks just pumping negativity out 24 hours a day and we sit there glued to that thing, God is our source. Come on, give God some praise. God is, God is our source. We, we are ambassadors for Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's where your second birth certificate is. It's in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we're ambassadors. We're here as God's representative. And we can't be running in fear, speaking fear, doubt, unbelief. We are people of faith. You got to watch your words. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. What you hear. See, remember you used to repeat it to solidify that thing. Be careful of eyes what you what? See what you see. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We've got to understand that if we just, if we just use our kingdom tools, we'll be all right. That's why I was so excited about uh, Psalms 91 this morning. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Where's your dwelling? Right here. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. There shall no evil befall me. Why? He shall give his angels what? Charge over us to do what? Keep us in what? All your ways. Not some of them, but what? All of them. Now we got to get the word and we got to stand on that word. We got to stand on the promises. Instead of the what? Premises. I remember you preached that message. See, some people stand on the promise, but most people stand on the premise. That means you're just here on the grounds. But you got to get that word and stand on the promises because all the promises of God in him are yea and what? Amen. That's it. That's all I know. I'm not going to let them strike fear into me. I trust God. See, I trust God. I trust God. Yeah, you got to trust God in these last days. I'm telling you, the stuff going to be coming out like never before. But we still got to what? Trust God. Trust God. He said, if you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will do what? Direct, Direct your path. See, it's time to stand on the promises now. Yeah, everything else is going down but the word. <laughs> everything else is going to fall apart uh, but, but the word. Because what, what's happening is, until Jesus returns and establish his government, I think uh, uh, Isaiah prophesied that over 
I wrote it down, Isaiah uh, 9, when he was talking about his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and, uh, and, and the government or of his government, there should be no end. Government shall be upon his shoulder. That's, that's the only time we're going to have righteous rule. Okay, is when the government is turned, the government of God is reestablished in the earth realm. That's the only time we're going to have righteous rule. I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'm going to vote because, let me tell you why I vote. I vote because of what my ancestors went through to gain us the right to vote. I don't want all of their labor and deaths and everything they went through to be in vain. That's why I vote. But here's the other part of that. I don't trust any of them. <laughs> so I just go, I just pray and, and go with who I feel in my spirit or my heart. Uh, it will be the, uh, uh, the, the, the lesser. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, I mean, there there's some things, you know, I know we got excited when Barack got in, but there's some things, some doors he opened. There's some doors he opened that caused some stuff to shift in our country, in, in our nation that's causing a lot of, of, of devastation and a lot of whatever curses or whatever to come upon this nation. You know, I know why we voted for him. Because he looked like him. But then there were some things, that, some doors that were open up that's causing a lot of stuff right now that's wrecking havoc in our nation. But that's where the church comes in. That's where we come in, through prayer. Pray for those that are what? In authority. See, we done got all in our flesh. I ain't praying. Somebody told me, I ain't praying. I can't pray. I just can't fix my mouth to say any good words for the president. Well, you're not understanding your purpose in the earth realm as citizens of the kingdom of God. He said, pray for those that are what? In authority. He didn't say, pick and choose. He said, go by your feelings. You've been commanded by God Almighty, who we serve, to pray for, for kings and for all those that are in authority. And he said, this is the reason why, that we, might, that we might do what? Live or what? Peaceable and what? Life with, I want you to read that. Where is that? Get the word out. We just talking today because church folk done went crazy. Church folk, I'm trying to reel you in. Get in the spirit. See, we can't get over there and, 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 and be ruled by our emotions. Either you're going to be spirit-led spirit or emotionally driven. Amen. A peaceable life with what? In all godliness, In all godliness and, honesty. and honesty. What's the next verse? Well, this, is good. this is good and acceptable, and acceptable in, the in the sight of God our Savior. That's what the scripture says. So I can't let my emotions and my feelings get in the way of what God has told me to do as a kingdom, as a citizen of the kingdom of God. See, we, we, we emotion, just take that E off and what, what you got left? Motion. motion, motion just can go anyway. You know, the tide come in, the tide go out, the motion, the waves in. See, emotions will have you up and down, but faith will, 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 have you to remain stable and solid and fixed. That's why I walk by what? Faith and not by sight. Now, I'm going to give you in this message, and we've already had corporate prayer, and I want to continually invite you out on Sunday mornings at 930 for corporate prayer. We've got to return to prayer. We, we must return to prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and what? Pray. Now, I know uh, people say, well, I could pray at home. You can. 
but it's something about a corporate prayer. Corporate prayer that brings us together or in one place where we're all speaking the same thing. We're saying the, the same thing. We're coming together in unity and oneness. This, this is prayer time. Things are happening. People are going crazy out there. I don't know how many messages I got say, make sure you go to the to the to the uh, 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 medical place, a medical store, and buy all the masks you can buy. I ain't investing in masks. <laughs> so, man, I'm gonna use my money to go to Red Lobster too. I, mean, I want to eat. <laughs> buy all the masks, run around there, run around there like that, because you're afraid of this what Corona something. And, then they tell you it has made its way to Florida. Folk don't want to come to church now. I'm serious, man. I was down at the basketball tournament, and you should have seen people was getting in an uproar. If somebody sneezed around, I do hey. <laughs> Cover your mouth. Yeah. This this one guy, I'm serious. This one guy, he coughed into his, his like, <clears throat> And somebody said, man, that thing will go right through your shirt and get in your skin. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, but man, hey, God is good. I'm not saying don't be careful, cautious, or whatever, but don't allow it to, to, to motivate you uh, in a way that God doesn't want us to be motivated like like the, with the elections and stuff. See, it's motivated Christians talking all uh, crazy. And, and when God, we are the stabilizer. Amen. Why, why do you think when the, the rapture occurs, all hell is going to break loose in the earth? Huh? Why? Because the church is gone. The light of the world. The same thing happened when Jesus died. When Jesus died, it turned dark right at midday. Why? Because the light of the world was gone. Now, we are the light of the world. And once we are raptured out of here, there's no light. So we're here to provide light in dark places. And if we're saying the same thing they're saying, we're responding the same way they're responding, we're behaving the same way the world is behaving, then how can we stand out? That's where our faith comes in. That's where our faith comes in, that I believe God. I believe God. Now, uh, we're going to go along this line today. And, Father, we thank you with time remaining and uh, for blessing us. And the word is blessed. We are blessed. And we thank you that you've blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And for that, we give you praise, glory, and the honor for the victory. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to make one uh, other, uh, uh, just a testimony. Uh, uh, Dr. Williams, you know, we prayed for his daughter on last Sunday, and Dr. Williams wanted us to know uh, today that she has been released from the hospital, and she is home. Mary is home. Come on, give God some praise. Mary, Mary is home. So prayer works. Prayer works. Now, I've been teaching this particular message for about 15 years, and I go back and, and look at it again, and, and uh, uh, I'll go back and teach it because I know faith comes by hearing and not having heard. See, sometimes we hear stuff, we move on, but you have to continually what? Hear and hear and hear until it changes the way that I think and changes my behavior. And that's what this whole thing is about, transforming us into the image of Christ. Transforming us into the image of Christ and, that's, and he calls us the church because Christ is the head of the body called the church. He's the head. He's the head. We are the body. Now, we all know that our, uh, the brain is in the what? Head, right? So now once the brain begins to, 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 to send signals or, or tell the body what to do, the body won't do anything. But that's why... Uh, Christ is the head, and we have the mind of Christ. So when he tells us to do something, he has all the brains. He has all the knowledge. He has all the sense, and he's trying to uh, want us to use his mind, use his sense to carry out stuff in the earth. Isn't that something? 
That's what we use. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not trying to use my own mind to think about this thing. I just go and see what the word says, see what God says, and what he wants me to do, what he wants me to say, and that's the direction that I go. Are you with me? So this message, I've, I've, I've done this message of at least 10, 15 times, and I call it uh, Keys to Life, because John 10:10, 10, 10, uh, Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. destroy. He said, but I have come that you may have what? Life. Have it more abundantly until it what? Overflow. Now, how many of you want to live the overflow life? I want to live the overflow life. Now, I think the Amplified Bible uh, says it's something to this, to, uh, to this light. I've come that you may have life and enjoy. Have and enjoy life. Enjoy life. How many of you are enjoying life? At, don't raise your hand, but in your own mind. How many of you really enjoying life? Well, if you're not, then that's evident that you're not living the life that God wants you to have. Because Jesus said, I've come that you may have it and enjoy it. Have it to the full until it overflows. In other words, your joyful life is overflowing into somebody else's life, making them joyful too. He said, that's the kind of life I've come that you can have. It's available. If he says you can have it, that means it's what? It's available. And if you're not enjoying it, that means something is not going right or you're not doing something according to the word. You can't sleep at night, that means you got some junk going on in your mind. You got some cares going on in your mind that you have refused to cast upon him. Because he said, cast what? All. Uh, one translation says, the whole of your cares, all of it. See, we want to try to handle some. No, he said, cast, casting all your cares. And when you don't do that, listen, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can write a book on depression. I can write a book on staying up late because I can't go to sleep because I have so much on my mind. I'm just about done with all the old pictures that come on. I have seen every every episode of Andy Griffith, every episode of Leave it to Beaver. I mean, even, even see, some of y'all don't even know this, but I watch Perry Mason, and he don't come on about 1 o'clock in the morning. So you didn't know that. It's one of them channels way up there. That thing way up in there in the 600s. You got to be flipping. The fine Perry Mason and Twilight Zone. They come on back to back. Why am I up doing that? Because I can't sleep. That's okay if you just want to be up watching it, but you know, I'm watching it because I, I can't go to sleep. I was to the point that if my TV wasn't on, I couldn't sleep. And if the and, and I don't know if the TV does it by itself or if my grandson has programmed it something but that thing cuts off somebody's a smart tv if it was that smart it'll stay on so i could sleep the minute that tv goes off my eyes pop open and i gotta turn it on so i can go back to sleep that's how it used to be i said i got to get out of this I, I, I got to get out of this right here. I, I went to the, my, my, my physician at Watson Clinic, and, and, and he told me he, he, he wanted to give me some Xanax or something to help me sleep at night. He said, you take these right here, and, and you'll be able to sleep at night. And he said, they'll settle you down, and you'll be all right, Pastor. Well, you know, I was trying to follow him. I was in like zoom, zoom. I 
said, man, I got to stop this right here. I don't need this. this. This stuff had me like, you know, my eyes was all beady. See, this ain't working. Then I learned how to cast cares. God, I can't handle this without you. I need you. Every hour, I need you. Lord, help me. You said in your word, you give your beloved rest. That's what the word says. So I had to go and begin to grab the promise and stand on them and stand on them and stand on them until I could go to sleep without all of that. See, the world has something for us, but the word also has something better. Are you with me? So I call this keys to life. Keys, keys open doors. Keys crank cars. Keys make things operate. And I call this message keys of life. Some, some factors or some things that we can do as believers that would open doors, that will, will, will start things up in our lives so that we can, we can be who God has called us to be in the earth. And I wrote down about 10, I think it was, about 10 keys or in, or to life. And I'm not going to go over every one of them, but I'm going to list them today. And the first key was prayer. And that's why we are so focusing now on prayer. And I want to thank Pastor Stephanie for, for, for this prayer school and uh, because prayer is so important in the life of a believer. Prayer connects us to God. Prayer causes or prayer allow, allows God to intervene in earth's affairs through Jesus. Now, let me explain that. Let me explain how, how that is. The Bible says the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord. That's God's. God's. God's place is in heaven. That's where his home is in heaven. That's where we say the, the mansions are. That's where everything is in heaven, and that's where we want to get one day. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. In other words, he gave earth to man. Heaven belonged to God. He gave Adam earth, and Adam was responsible he was the figurehead of earth he was the governor of earth okay but what he did was he legally adam legally gave over the keys to earth or the world to satan that's how satan became the god of this world okay but now here is god and that's why god had to by force he had to push adam out of the garden by force, he had to get him out of the garden and protect the tree of life so that Adam wouldn't go and partake off of the tree of life and then man lives forever with a fallen nature. But God had to find a way to get back into the earth because uh, Satan legally was given earth or, or the world through Adam. So God had to send another man. That's why Jesus had to come as a man because he gave it to man. He couldn't come back as God because he'll be violating the word and he can't violate the word. So Jesus had to come as a man, but this man had to be sinless. Everybody else was a partaker of Adam's fallen nature. But Jesus came through a virgin with the seed of God or the, or the sperma of God and he did not have the nature of man, but he had the nature of God. So now when Jesus passed all of the tests and he was, he was unlawfully killed because the wages of sin is death. But Jesus never sinned. So legally, Satan had no rights to take him out. Jesus laid down his life or he became a sin offering. According to 2 Corinthians he became a sin offering for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now, the way to get God's intervention into earth's affairs is to pray to God in the name of a man called who? Jesus. So that's why we use Jesus' name. 
because now God can once again intervene in earth's affairs only or only when we pray. That allows God. That's why I say pray for all those that are in authority. He said, why? He said, because this is the way you're going to live that life you want. You got to pray for them. That's the only way I can intervene. The children of Israel was praying. They were being hard pressed by Pharaoh. They were making brick out of straw. And they prayed, they prayed, and they prayed, and then God intervened and gave them a way out. We want a way out. We got to pray. We got to pray. So what God did was, now because they were praying, God came in and he changed or he turned Pharaoh's heart. See, we got to realize that God holds the hearts of the kings in his hands. He, he can turn them any way he wants to. He, he turned our old hearts, didn't he? Some of us sitting in here right now say, I never go to church. church. Church are full of old hypocrites. Look at you. You in here with us all. Right? We say we'll never go to church. We ain't want no part of no religion. But then God, what? Turned our hearts. And he took out our heart of stone and he gave us a heart of flesh. He did a spiritual surgery on us and we didn't even realize it. And he calls it the new birth. We were born again. So prayer is essential in the life of a believer and prayer is the power of life. We said that on, on last Sunday. Uh, uh, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, what? No power. P prayer is the power of our lives. And under that particular topic, as it relates to prayer, is that we have to realize that there are kinds or there are types of prayers. Let's look at Ephesians uh, chapter 6, because this is where... You know, many times we, we talk about the whole arm of God, a spiritual warfare. We immediately uh, use uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Most of our, most of our uh, 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 warfare, spiritual warfare topics will come from one of those two scriptures or both. And here now when he says we, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but, but it's against principalities and powers in verse 12, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So now, notice this thing now. He said, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Now, let me explain that. It's very, very simple, but yet uh, most believers, they don't have it yet. Now, just for learning purposes, just, just basic learning purposes, I, I want you to know something, that whoever is sitting on the side of you, left or right, okay, left or right, and so that means this is going to include you because you're sitting on somebody's left or either you're sitting on their right. Now, let me clue you in on something. They are flesh and blood. Just think about it now, Paul. Think about it. Now, so what he's telling us is the person on your left or your right is not who you are wrestling against. That's right. It's not them. That's right. Move them out of the equation. Now, I'm not saying that they can't be used by Satan because uh, many of us are used by Satan at times. Peter was used by Satan. He was used by God. He got a direct re uh, a revelation from heaven. Jesus even said it. Then before long, Jesus had to rebuke him because he said, you ain't going to the cross. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He knew that was Satan speaking through this flesh and blood person. So the enemy can use any of us at any moment that we are not uh, sober. That's why I say be sober, vigilant, watchful. 
your adversary, the devil. Say it's the devil. Say it's not the pastor. Thank you. He said, as a roaring lion, he's walking about seeking who he can use for his purpose. But when we know it's the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he may be operating through that individual, but that scripture tells me that's, who, that's not who I'm fighting. So stop fighting each other. We're all in this together. We're not battling each other. I'm not battling this, you know, another pastor. I'm not battling another congregation. I ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. This, this is satanic warfare that we are engaged in. It's principalities. These are, these are fallen angels. When, when Satan fell from heaven, uh, according to uh, 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 he said, uh, Jesus said, uh, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. That's how God, quick God had kicked him out. He kicked him out quick. Like lightning. You ever seen like lightning then you don't see it? He said that's how fast Satan got kicked out of heaven. Just like that. God didn't play. <laughs> he just got it right on out of there because he was messing up stuff. But with his tail he drew out a third of the heavenly host or angelic beings, they are now demons. In fact, the Bible says that some of them were so bad that they are in chains right now until judgment. So he took one third of the angels with him who followed him in his rebellion to overthrow the government of God. He said, you know what? I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's what it was. He said, I'm going to be like the most high God. And Jesus, he said, uh-uh. No, you're not. And he kicked them out. So now these are the principalities. These are the powers. The rulers of the darkness of this age. These are the spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who our warfare is against. So now he comes and he said, okay, this is what you got to do. This is what I want you to do. He says, wherefore, take unto you the what? Whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Withstand in the what? Now, see, now, that would be okay, uh, uh, and, and I could be prepared if I knew the evil day was going to be Wednesday. <laughs> right? I, I said, well, Tuesday, I'm going to get ready. When's it going to be the evil day? Well, the evil day can be any day. That's why you have to always have on the what? Whole armor that you can what? Withstand. Now, here's withstand. This whole uh, our premise thing here, this whole text that, that Paul is talking about, and what I like about it is when he, when he gets there, uh, he, he went through five and a half chapters before he, and he, before he said, finally my brethren. So he says, withstand. This is, this is a military terminology that he's using. Withstand. In other words, now, withstand means that I've got to plant my feet. I've got to plant myself because I'm, there's an onslaught that's coming against me, so I've got to plant myself. That's, that's how I withstand. So he said that I can what? Withstand in the what? evil day, he says, having done all, keep standing. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep, standing. keep standing. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you faint. Don't you lose heart. I know things may not be going right. It may be your evil day right now. It, it, you, maybe your evil day has been for days. Maybe your evil days has been for weeks or for months, but don't you give up. You will stand. And having done all to stand, do what? Keep standing. I'm going to keep standing until I get what I'm standing there for. I'm not going to be, I just, I just, you know, y'all have heard my testimony. I just don't like to lose. 
And when I found out that Satan was defeated, that threw some stuff out there on me like, why in the world would I let a defeated foe defeat me? He's defeated already. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Satan is defeated. Say he's defeated. So now you're going to let somebody who's defeated defeat you? No. He's already lost. And I think when Jesus got through with him, boy, Jesus, he paraded him around. That was a big victory lap. And, and he went down in his own territory. Now, that was a no-no. You don't let somebody come to your house and whoop you. Now, if you, you let somebody come to your house and beat you, you need to move. See, he, he went down in hell. He, he that ascended is the first and also that descended into the lower parts of the earth. Jesus just went in the grave. His body was in the grave, but his spirit went to hell. Like the rest of us are the people that if they're not born again, their body is in the grave, but their spirit at the moment of death and their soul is ushered either up or down. So because Jesus did not sin, Satan had no right. But still Jesus went down there and whooped up on him in his own house. Now think about the third of them angels who follow him. They sitting back watching this. Now we done, we done left. The, 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 here we are down here. You done let Jesus come down here. Everything looked good for two days. We, we thought we had him. But as I heard old Baptist preachers say, but on the third day, on the third day morning, he got up. With all power, not some power, but all power, not black power, but all power in his hand. Then he immediately transferred that power when he told the disciples, he said, all power has been given unto me both in heaven and in what? Earth. Then the next thing he said was, go. Go how? With that power. Go with that power. So prayer is the power of life. No prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, what? Much power. Then the next one is self-esteem. And now self-esteem, man, oh my God, you, you know, if you got low self-esteem, you're going to be a miserable person and people around you, you're going to make them miserable too. If you don't feel good about you, you know, you better learn because the, the, the command that Jesus gave, the second command was love thy neighbor as thyself. If you don't love your neighbor, you can't, if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor, you, you don't even like you. How you going to love somebody and you don't even love you? You better learn to love you just as you are. This is it. I love myself some E.T. Now, people can call it conceited, egotistical. You can put any name on it you want, but I love me. So you ought to be happy because that will help me to love you. So self-esteem is the foundation of life. You can build on that. Self-esteem is the foundation of my life. Write down Proverbs 23 and 7. Because my thoughts about myself control my actions towards others. How do you feel about you? We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> we, we, we are, and you are, I am, we are a designer's original. I don't need the Gucci 
or none of those other things that make me feel good about me. Uh, it may look good on you, but if you don't feel good about you, none of that matters anyhow. You see what I'm saying? We, we try to go out and we do, we got to keep up with the Jones. We got to do all that stuff, try to make us feel good. And we end up home alone and we just don't like nothing about us. We didn't have a good day. I just went to be gone. I ain't have a good time. I should have stayed home. That's because you're miserable on the inside. You are miserable. You don't feel good about you. I mean, people spend all that money to walk in somewhere looking good so people can tell them how good they look. And if they don't say no, I know I look good. They ain't got to say, well, why, why you need their opinion? That's a sign of low self-esteem. So it's the foundation of your life. You got to learn how to feel good about you. See, I feel good about me. Yeah, poor self-esteem uh, uh, cause you to have weak faith in God. Let me show you that. Numbers, num let's look at Numbers chapter 13. Go to Numbers. I don't go to Numbers a lot, but. Yeah, Numbers, say Numbers. My grandma told me she used to write Numbers. <laughs> Y'all missed that. <laughs> Hey, y'all, man. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she didn't write these numbers, but, but she said she wrote numbers. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. That's before the lottery came out. That, that, that was the Hoods lottery. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It's, here's another name for it, Bolita. Let's look at verse 20, 26. Are y'all with me? <laughs> you don't know nothing about that? Melinda, he don't know nothing about that. Huh? He don't know anybody. So you, you spared him from that. Hey, Amen. That's a good mom. Yeah, but that's, yeah. Yeah. He said, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them. Notice what did they bring back? The word. word. They brought back what? Word. See, and that's what we have to guard ourselves against. What are what is people or what are they bringing to me with words? Because that what you hear, and if you receive it, it can motivate you in different ways, either from a negative perspective or a positive perspective, words. So the Bible says, and they brought back word unto them and all unto all the congregation. Notice they spread this stuff. They finna spread it. That's what happened in churches. People, you know, uh, uh, we are sheep. Say we are sheep. And see, a, a shepherd, a shepherd had to had to guard the sheep uh, when they he realized that there were diseased sheep amongst the sheepfold. So what he would do was he would he would strike that particular sheep or sheep out of there. Like when David said, "He anointed my head with what oil." That's the only thing. They will put oil on the sheep because they're trying to get that sheep healed because those sheep run in, 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 in a herd or they run in a sheepfold. And when they rub up against each other, if that sheep is diseased, he'll spread that disease to other sheep. Like church folk. They'll come right up in the sheepfold with a negative word. 
They're not content on keeping that negative word and bringing those thoughts into captivity. They ain't content until they tell that negative word to somebody else. And before it now, you got a negative word running throughout the congregation. And before you know it, the congregation is diseased. So the Bible says he, he brought back word unto them and to all the congregation. But notice this. He showed them the fruit of the land, just what he said was going to be there. Clusters of grapes so big they had to put them on a pole. Isn't that something? They had to put them on a pole to bring them back. I mean, because this land was a land that flowed with milk and honey, and here they come right back. They said, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thy sin is us, and it flowed with milk and honey. And they say, here's the proof right here. Oh, but he said, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, which were giants. He said, the Amalekites, were, they dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And here come Caleb. That's why I like that name, Caleb. I always tell him, boy, you got, a, you got an awesome name. He said, Caleb, now this is what he did. He said he stilled the crowd, meaning he said, shut up. <laughs> to stop talking like that. He still the, uh, all the people before Moses and said, let us go up at what? Once. In other words, say that. Okay, I ain't moved by that. How big they are and how many and the walls and all that stuff like that. Let's just hush and go because God had promised it. Amen. He said, let us go up at once and do what? Possess it. For we are what? Well able to do what? Overcome it. I don't care what it is. You're well able. Got the spirit of God on the inside of it. You've got the word of God in your heart. You are well able to overcome this thing. Stop looking at what the enemy is doing and, and grab hold to what God wants to do for you and through you. Be too focused on, on Satan. The Bible didn't say looking unto Satan. Say, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher or the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured. Learn how to endure. Christians just throw in the tower for any little thing. My God, we got to tiptoe through the tulips at church. You know, I, I, Sometimes I don't even want to call nobody's name. When somebody do something, because you might leave out one. And they little old teen out your feelings. I was there too. When he ain't called my name, I ain't coming back here no more. He mentioned everybody else but me. Get over that already. Get, 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 get. Come on, you stronger than that. Then you're, you, you emotionally driven. By accolades, I wanted to be careful. For the, you know, I just go, Lord, did I, I was writing a list. Did I leave out anybody, you know? Did I leave out any, anybody connected to them? You know, maybe it was a friend that assisted them that wasn't supposed to be there, but they helped out, and I don't know they were there. Did I leave them out because if I don't say it? Say I'm well able. I'm well able. He said, he said, we are. We're well able, but the men that went up said, we, we, we be not able to go up against the people. Can't you see them little wimps? You got grapes so big, you got to bring them back on a stick. You saw this land is flowing with milk and honey because you said it. Then you're looking at yourself. Now, I don't think we can do it. So he said, notice this, he says, he said, for they, 
are stronger than we. How you know? You haven't even gone up. You haven't even tried. You just looked at it. That's why we walk by what? Faith. Oh, don't look at it and try to size it up. They saw the giants. They saw, but they didn't look at the, the, the land that was flowing with milk and honey that was promised to them. Nothing saying that walking into the promise and grabbing the promise was going to be easy. You think the devil wants you to just possess the promises of God without a fight? That's why I say this is the victory that overcomes the world. You ain't going to get no victory if you ain't on the battlefield. Victory is a one in the battle. We want victory without a fight. That ain't going to happen because these principalities, these powers who Jesus made a show of them opening, the last thing they want to happen in your life is for you to know who you are in Christ. As long as you just church folk, nobody's trying to tell everybody about somebody who, as long as you see yourself as inchworms, We're just old sinners saved by grace. Yeah, I was a sinner. Now that I'm saved by grace, I am a saint, and I have a decision to make to either be strong or weak because those are the choices that was laid out before me. Life and death, those were the choices that was laid out before me. He said, now just in case you don't know which one to choose, choose life. Just choose life. I'm going to tell you, hint, hint. So he says, notice this, he says, and, and, and they brought back, they brought up a what? Evil, evil report. An evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land uh, through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw the, the giants, the son of Anna, we, we saw the giants, and we were uh, in our own sight as grasshoppers. In other words, that's how they saw themselves. And how you see yourselves will be how the enemy see you as well. You see yourself as a weakling, well, yeah. The enemy, he's waiting on to see uh, how you feel about yourself by what you're saying. By your words, you shall be justified, and by your words, you shall be damned or condemned. The enemy is just waiting on to see if you really believe the promises of God and are you willing to stand there for until you get what you're standing there for. Are you with me? So self-esteem is so important because poor self-esteem causes men to have a weak faith and a negative view of their world. That's what drives this, this world, negativity. I don't want to say nothing good on the news. They don't want you to hear nothing good. I want to tell you all about the bad so they can feed that and pump that into your spirit. There's a lot of good things going on and there's a lot of good people in the world and you are one of them. Come on, give God some praise. I'm getting ready to close. Y'all get anything out of this? The next one is change. Say change. Change is just the way of life. You got to get used to it. Nothing remains the same. Change is going to happen. You can't stop it. You just got to embrace it. Don't mean you have to take part in everything that happened, but you're going to be a miserable person if you think you're just going to be here and things are not going to change around you. Everything's changing. Everything's changing. Man, they got us, man, we hooked. I want to I wanna prepare us and get us so, so, uh, with a, such a strong foundation that we can build some stuff on so I can start telling you about what's really happening in this world and where we're headed. You got to be prepared for that. Changes are going to happen, man. The Antichrist is setting up shop. We are, we, we are, we are this close to a one-world government. We are this close to a one world economic system. 
and we are this close to a new religion. There's going to be a new governmental structure. There's going to be a, with a new economic structure. All of these things is, is part of what uh, they label as NWO, New World Order. Get ready for it. It's here. Amen. We're connected. You're in it. You're using it. It's in your hand. It's in your house. It's in your car. It's in your wallet. It's in your purse. Everything that they need to bring those systems into place, they're already there. They know wherever you, where, they know every place you go. They, they know what you eat. They know the people you like, who you dislike. They know who's connected to you, who you follow. Everything, how much you got in the bank. They control it all because Satan is the god of this what? World system. They connected us and we didn't even know. They connect us through deceit. It's, it's easy. It's simple. It's convenient. It's, it's all of those things that we like. It, you, can, you can do things faster, man. You can transfer your money. You can, you can cash app. You can, you know, you can, you can, you can check your account. You can open all this stuff. You don't have to go now and with money, just go and slide your phone there and with the app. An app for this, an app for that, an app. Do you, do you know that's a part of this system? But we're in it. They're in your house. I was talking to somebody the other day on the phone, and we were talking about this one world government and stuff, and I said, yep, this new world order, is, it, it's already in place. And, and my Alexa said, would you repeat that? She asked me to repeat it. I said, you better shut up before I unplug you. <laughs> I'm going to take you out the plug. So you know what came to me? Then what you going to do with your phone? Well, what you going to do with your navigation system in your car? What you going to do with your bank, with your cards? It's all part to know what you got in the bank, what bank you use, how much, where you normally go, where you eat, where you spend your most money to. They, you know, you know, we got to, I mean, where your car is parked and, and everything. I had to use that the other day, man. I was parked, didn't know where my car was. I hit the thing on there and they say, just follow this line. Led me right to my car. Right on my, right, see? Hit the little button. I was trying to punch the, the lights to come on. Hit the little red button. The lady can't say, Mr. Pickett, may we help you? <laughs> but if you hit the button by mistake, we'll hang up. I say, yes, I hit it by mistake. She said, thank you. Have a nice day. She, like, where you at? <laughs> we in it. But that's a part of the new world order. New world what? Order. See, the church don't want to talk about that stuff. We, we're not prepared for that. We're not ready for that strong meat. We're still, trying to, we're still trying to get people to love one another. We're still trying to get people to forgive one another. We're trying to get people to trust one another. We're trying to get people to not betray each other. We're still trying to get you not to bite back and be jealous and gossip and envy. We're still majoring on the minors. We can't get into the deeper because we love the cheaper. Paul said, there's some other stuff I want to tell y'all, but I can't tell y'all because you're too carnal. Not that he didn't know it. He knew they weren't prepared to receive it because they had too much fleshly stuff going on to be able to receive the stronger meat of the word. So I'm going to give you the rest of them. I know we're going over time, but uh, it was a time change <laughs> that, that did this, okay? And they ought to leave this clock right there. Somebody said last year they weren't going to move it anymore. That wasn't even true. 
they had spread that thing everywhere. Somebody said, this is the last year they were going to do it. And they said they had read it somewhere, spread that lie all around. And they think, I know they say, take your clock back. So the next one is, I'm going to give you the next four and we'll, next six, and we'll, we'll get, deal with them later. Desire. Desire is the motivation of life. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You, what is your desire? Desire motivates you. After desire comes vision. Vision is the blueprint of your life. What, what, what is the vision for your life? See, folk, folk would much rather for the church or the, the, the structure here to have a vision so that they can participate in it than, rather than have a vision for their own life. What's the vision for your life? Don't worry about what's the vision for the church. I'm going to tell you what the vision is for the church, to teach the word. Build you up. Teach you how to pray. Teach you how to live a victorious life. That's the vision of the church. You know, people, I know what they want me to say. Are we going to have like a, you know, a Chuck and Cheese type, type, type thing for the children? See, that's what they go about, vision. We're going to have a women's ministry, a children's ministry, team ministry. We're going to have all that. They want everything to be here, but they don't have a vision for their own personal life. You got to have a vision for your personal life because your vision for your personal life is the blueprint of your life. The next one is faith. Faith is a force. Faith is a force. Faith moves mountains. If you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say, go here, go yonder. You can speak to the mountain and command them to be moved and cast into the sea. But he say, but don't doubt in your heart. But believe those things that you say uh, will come to pass and you can have what? Whatsoever you say. What are you saying? Well, what are you saying? Be careful. What are you saying? So faith now is the force of life. The next one is discipline. Discipline is the strength of life. We have to discipline our thoughts. Bringing thoughts into captivity. That's called discipline. It's strength in discipline. An undisciplined life leads you to a life of destruction. You got to be disciplined to follow rules and regulations. Or it can cost you later on. Somebody are not disciplined enough to, to stop at the stop sign. Or disciplined enough to, to, to stop at a traffic light. That takes discipline. It can cause destruction. So discipline produces strength on the inside of our lives. The next one is uh, truth. Truth is the freedom of our life. Now, I know people say, and the Bible say, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Good. And, and, and truth is a part of the armor of God. But it's also talking about the truth of you. So many people live a lie. God knows us. We spend too much time trying to impress people, trying to hide from people. You know, just be honest. It's you. It's me. That's the truth. But we're trying to hide behind because we don't want people to judge us. We don't want people talking about us. Trust me, if they focus on their own issues, everybody got issues. Just be honest about it. You can't get saved until you're honest about you being a sinner. God knows who you are. He knows your, your, your down sittings, your uprising. He knows your faults, your failures, your shortcuts. He knows everything about you. So why are you trying to impress people? Be truthful. That's who I am. But I'm desiring change. If it's a negative thing, that's not what I want to be or what I want to do. But that's who I am right now. And that's the what? Truth. It's freedom in that. It's freedom when you don't have to hide from people. What can they do? They can't save you. They don't have a heaven for you, neither a hell. You got to be real about it. We got to know we got them old super saints out there. Think they right next to God. They want to judge people. Yeah, so now you go all out to impress them and hide from them. Man, no, I ain't hiding from you. I live that life. That's a life of bondage. I've been there, done that. That, that didn't work. It didn't work. I thought it was working, but it didn't work. I know we're getting close to leaving because amens ain't coming like they was. <laughs> About five minutes ago. 
I picked that up right there. I would get some strong amens about three minutes ago. Them things start getting with <laughs> I, I you look like I'm not a novice at this now. I ain't just start doing this. I know, man, they witch a boy for that time frame that has been allotted for the word. I mean, I see some strong, yes, pastor. You know, next thing you know, yeah. I see a few people, they try to give you a hint like they, like they don't. They're, Yes, sir. I'm trying to let the pastor know now, pastor. I'm with you, but I'm about a minute away from number one. <laughs> the last two is giving and relationships. Giving is the source of life. If you want to live, then give. Give love. Give peace. Give forgiveness. All these things Jesus talks about in the book of Luke that we need to give. He's saying if you do that, it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men were given to your bosom. He wasn't talking about money. He was talking about forgiveness. He was talking about love. He was talking about mercy, those things. He said, you give that, it'll come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men were given to your bosom. Folk be want to know, why they judging me so hard? Check you, check you, check yourself. Because these things are boomerang. They'll come right back. Now, you, you won't. See, when, when, when somebody do something wrong and we see it, we want them to get judgment. Then when it happens to us, we want mercy. And you give mercy. And why you want mercy and you've been given judgment? No, I'm going to give out mercy. I'm going to give forgiveness. Why? Because of my time of need, when I mess up, that's what I want to come back. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. I want men to give that into my what? Bosom. And the last one is relationships. That's the network of life. Don't say you, can, you don't need anybody. You do. Everybody needs somebody. Relationships is the network of life. We are part of the body of Christ. We are members one of another. And we all need each other. Uh, uh, did you get anything out of that? Come on, give God some praise. Father, we thank you today and as we talk about these keys to life that opens doors and open opportunities and, 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 and cause us to walk in victory in our lives. We, we want to thank you for our prayer life and thank you for building us up in our self-esteem by decreeing and declaring that we are royal priesthoods, we are holy nations, we are we're peculiar people. And Father, we desire change in our lives. Those things that are going on on the inside of us that we're trying to internalize Father God, that we know needs to be changed. Father God, we submit ourselves to change through the power of your word and your spirit. And Father, those things that we desire in our lives, some desire one thing, some desire another.